to do it this time. Okay, the conditions are right. I, 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 I need somebody else's watch. I need somebody else's watch. Somebody else's watch. It's not good. Look at the sign for my door. All I want to do is just dig it. All I want to do is open it up. <laughs> and then I'm going to take it apart piece by piece. The maximum now that this watch 20 pieces most. Okay? I know how to take it apart. But I don't know how to put them together again. You mind? You go to the dollar store anyway, probably, huh? Huh? Is that <laughs> yeah, so, so then it's, it's only worth 40 cents now. <laughs> it's, it's long. So I take it apart. Now, here, let's assume I've taken this apart and take, put all the parts into a bag. I've now given you a head start of who knows how much. In that bag, I have now put all the components that I need for this watch. Okay? Number two. Even more important. In that bag, I have nothing else but the components for this watch. Which means there's no foreign element that can interfere with what I want to do. Number three. All the components are for, for the watch, each one is cut down to its right size and dimension. Conditions are right. Okay? All I need to do is put them together. So now I'm going to shake this bag. How long will I have to shake this bag before all the parts will fall together to form this watch? Well, I'll you give you 90% head start. 90% I give you everything you need by giving you nothing but what you need and giving you everything that you need precisely the way you need it. All I have to do is just put it together. 100,000 years. Why 100,000 years? Start shaking. Huh? <laughs> but who says it's coincidence? Who said, who said it just happens? Maybe, no, but maybe it was something towards the middle. Maybe there was evolution, but it was... I have, I have no doubt that if I shake, this, I shake this bag, two pieces will come together the way they should. Three pieces may come together, but as I keep shaking, one piece will fall off again, and another piece will come attached, etc., etc. If I put a seed in the ground, how long do I have to shake the ground for a tree to come out? You don't shake the ground at all. Okay, so, so the tree just comes out, so why it just happens naturally? So why can't my body... And how long will it take for a tree to go when you do not put a seed in the ground? Where I do not put a seed in the ground, yeah. the, the tree won't grow. Exactly, period, finish, stop right there. That's exactly the point. That's all I need for growing a tree. I have two ingredients, the seed and the earth. And the moisture that you need every so often. That's all, that's all I need to make a tree. Here I've given you the ingredients, but here I need also to put it together. They are, they are put together already. The answer, the answer is, it will never happen. Like now, there, is a, there, there is a saying that went through high schools for a while. <coughs> Take a monkey, give him a typewriter, give him an infinity of time, and he'll keep banging on the typewriter, and, and after infinity time he will produce a play similar to a play by Shakespeare. The answer is yes, that's exactly it. Statistically that's correct. Except for one fallacy. I have to give him what? An infinity of time. What means infinity of time? What's another word for infinity? <laughs> another word for infinity means never. If I use the word infinity, it makes sense. If I use the word never, you realize what you really say. You use the same argument about God. We're fine, he's infinite. So? So that he just said that it means never. It's not infinite, my question. You just say infinity of time means it never ends. Okay? So, uh, now, you tell me, uh, so therefore you argue, if you do have a watch like this, automatically I conclude it must be a watchmaker. It's unavoidable. You have to say there's a watchmaker. The more, uh, One second. There must be a watchmaker. Now, what is Gator? The watch or the watchmaker? This is a minute product of a human brain. It doesn't take that much intelligence to put together a watch. Or even to invent a watch. So if this small product, very small product, of the human brain, you would never conceive that it has generated itself, then how much less is it possible for the human brain to generate itself? So therefore, if you want to be, make a consistent argument, if I see that every time I get a certain effect, every time I pull the switch, the light goes on, 
every time I pull the switch, the light goes off. So I can kind of manipulate certain effects. And from the effects, I know whether this is connected to electricity. The electricity nobody has ever experienced. No one has ever experienced electricity. All you have experienced is the effects of electricity. And from these effects, you judge backwards. There must be that component which must have a name, which we call electricity. And we get that by using the generators there, the Niagara Falls, or wherever it is, etc. That's how you can do it. Or you can do so by simply rubbing your shoes against the floor. Uh, it gets what you call static electricity, where you can also see effects, sparks, the whole works. Then, how much, then likewise, if I see effects on something else, which also require an explanation, then that cause of that effect I call God. The cause of that effect I call electricity, cause of that effect I call God. So the, it is an inconsistency. To put it somewhat differently, I would ask my students, tell me something that you once upon a time believed in and now no longer believe in. Can you mention something that you once believed in? Huh? Santa, you never believed in it. <laughs> 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 the tooth fairy. The tooth fairy. Oh, okay. That's safe for you. In my classes, I take Santa Claus too. But here it has to be the tooth fairy. Now, what made you change your mind? What you caught the Santa. Huh? You caught the person in the act. You caught your mother in the act. Your parents, whatever it is. Yeah. What does that prove? I mean, honestly, how do you know it didn't happen? Or just like, from the point of what age were you talking about? I don't care what age. I don't care about the age you believed in, about the age you no longer believed in. It. All I want to know is what made you change your mind. Well, maybe there's no such thing. What made you change your mind? It once you believed in it. You are three years old. You are three years old and you believed in it. Five years old, you no longer believe in it. What made you change your mind? Simple question. What made you change your mind? One time, you, one time you fell out of and you get a dollar. Oh, honey, it's not rare. Shh. What? Usually someone tells you. Your mommy told you something. No, better one. Better one. Better one. Huh? Better one. one time you never got the dollar or whatever, when your tooth fell out. How about the fact, Coach? Very simple. There was a tooth fairy. It would, it would be just yeah, so. there. No. Because of your behavior, you said she still came back to you? What? Maybe they caught it. Do you know how you behaved <laughs> to, to, from the last time before that? I never had that. He was just yeah. a tooth. Forget the behavior. Now you say, your mommy told you initially, don't worry, you lost the tooth. Tooth fairy will bring you a quarter. Right? <laughs> and then a year later, <laughs> all these quarters they add up, your mommy is too stingy, so there's no more tooth fairy. There never was a tooth fairy. What is that proof? It proves one thing and one thing only. That your mother is a dirty liar. <laughs> Either she lied when she told you there's a tooth fairy, or she lied when she told you there's no tooth fairy. And once I know that she's a liar, I can't trust her for anything she says. <laughs> Period. That's perfect. That's a, but critics say the same thing about certain events in the Bible, about Torah. They say that, oh, it wasn't an act of God, or it was just, you know, the course of, uh, course of nature taking it uh, or whatever. And Do you have the same person saying the same, that, affirming and denying? I'm talking about your mother affirming and denying. So now I know that your mother is a liar. That's all I know. That's all I know. So therefore, the questions come back. Why do you no longer believe in two things? I became intelligent and I stopped believing in it. I realized and you call that intelligent? intelligent? What's intelligent about that? Rationally, it didn't make any sense. Says who? Why didn't make any sense? Says who? On what kinds? It doesn't make sense anymore. Huh? Why does that make sense? Because we're so Why do you say there are no fairies? Because we're not so simple anymore. Because we're simple, we believe. Because what? Because there's science. Because <laughs> what, what, what does science have to say about fairies? Nothing. They don't exactly. Exist. Says who? <laughs> How do you know? Like atoms also once did not exist. And molecules once also did not exist. Oh. Bacteria also did once Those not exist. Physical things. Huh? A fairy is not a physical thing. Says who? <laughs> Says who? You think everything physical you have to see with your naked eye? I don't have to see it. Somebody said I have to see it. Do all these creepy crawlers flowing through the air that you are swallowing right now by the millions, these filthy, dirty, creepy crawlers, do they exist or do they not exist? <laughs> They're physical. But you don't see them, but you need a microscope. I didn't say I see them, I said they exist, they're physical. But how do you know they're physical if you haven't seen them? If I use the microscope, I'd see them. If you use the microscope, right now you don't use them, which means right now they don't exist. I didn't say that. 
I did. The theory is not physical. Well, this, first of all, how do you know that? Secondly, so what about that? It's got to do with it. God doesn't have to do with it. What is God Electricity is physical? Yes. The effect is yes. Physical. yes. Energy is physical? Yes. What is it? Well, how about makes it physical? The, how is it physical? Does it have substance? Can you touch it? Can you feel it? Can you taste it? Can you do anything with it? Nothing. No wrong. How can you say it's physical? The energy of that brick would be physical. Huh? Physical. What? If I threw a brick at you, you would feel it. I feel the brick. The energy. You no, the, the brick. <laughs> All I feel is the brick. Not true. Absolutely true. That if I push the brick, Absolutely true. All I feel is the brick. No. Because if I touched you with the brick, you would feel differently than if I threw it. Fine. Up. But what I feel is the brick. And if no, you touch it, you would feel, feel the brick. The, brick. Of all <laughs> <laughs> the way you feel the brick is because of this invisible, non-physical energy that is pushing it. In fact, if I threw the brick hard enough, you wouldn't even know it's a brick. Rabbi, if you throw so it hard enough, I won't feel the break, I can't guarantee it. Rabbi, in fact, is that the tooth fairy can still exist? Of course it does. Right. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when you stick your finger into the socket, you know why you get a shock? Because when you stick your finger, you stick your finger up the nose of the tooth fairy and she bites you. She doesn't like that. She lives in the socket. You can explain it however you want. Exactly. That's the thing. My simple point is the answer that things that I have not experienced you may use that in regards to God but if you use that with regards to God you have to use it with regards to something else as well. And if you want to cop out with regards to something else as well but there I see the effects then I can say with God you also see the effects. Which means it's on the same level. So if you reject the one, you have to reject the other. If you accept the one, you have to accept the other. Unless you can show that one has something which the other one does not have. Which of course you can't. Which means therefore that the basic argument of if that is the argument, just saying if that is the argument, that God does not exist because nobody has had, even that itself of course is questionable as well, because nobody has a physical experience, empirical experience of God, then I say there are so many other things in this world that you have no empirical uh, evidence for either, and yet you would swear on it that they are real, that they exist. Yeah, but they don't necessarily... You, you, you do not say what you do accept these things. It's electricity, right? Electricity has an effect on you, right? God, and yet, God exists. Thank you, man. No, no. There are effects, ongoing effects. You don't feel them like... Not necessarily... You don't feel that either. You see the effect. Here I can say the very, the very fact, the very life principle. Let's, let's take evolution. In logic, it's a fundamental principle. Nothing can come out of nothing. Okay? Now, if the original thing out of which everything evolved is matter, matter by definition is not life. Life is not something physical. So where does life come from? Intelligence is not something physical. Where does intelligence come from? Where does crude matter uh, evolve into something that is intelligent life? If that theory would be the, the, the proposed, I have no problem in, uh, to believe in evolution except evolution in terms of my religion. From a religious point of view, from a Torah point of view, I have no problems with evolution at all. If I accept creation, I can very well say God created the world to oppose evolution. Why? Because then evolution is not a problem. Because then I say God is simply prodding and pushing things in an evolutionary process instead of going zap from nothing into this. So God did it in gradual stages. So from a religious point of view, there's no problem. From a philosophical, scientific point of view, I have a problem with it. Where you leave God out of it. Because when you leave God out of it, if you propose a theory like that in any other sphere, that would throw you out of every window. Because it's so absurd. Why then is it so accepted? For a very simple reason. Because the field, we have only two options. God or a natural explanation. If I'm a scientist, I would need a natural explanation. Once I bring in God, I'm out of a job. Because once you bring in God, then God is directing things, God is controlling things, then this means I have a problem in, in terms of manipulating nature as it were. If, I, if I, 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 the only alternative to that is, let me come up with some kind of a natural explanation. Now, when the scientist speaks, for example, about laws of nature, this is the biggest absurdity. How can you have laws of nature when everything is 
coincidental when everything is, uh, 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 happens by, by fluke. By flukes you don't get lost. There's nothing so precise, nothing